Views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. Earlier this month, Major League Baseball reached agreement with Nike that would permit licensed baseball merchandise to be sold only to Nike-approved locations. The problem was that Nike did not approve the stores located on River Avenue near Yankee Stadium. This would have meant that eight of those stores that are part of the fabric of the Yankee experience in the Bronx would have been forced out of business. In step, tonight's guests, along with the Bow President, the city's Department of Small Business Services, and the Yankees themselves. And late last week, an agreement was reached to approve the stores for sale of official gear, thereby keeping them in business. Lots of lessons to learn here about corporate decisions that affect local business, and also about standing up for local Bronx merchants and Bronx small businesses. Please join me in welcoming the executive director of the 161st Street Business Improvement District, Dr. Carrie Goodman, nice to have you with us. Hi, Gary. And uh, the city council member from the Bronx's 16th district, which includes the Bronx neighborhoods of Claremont, Concourse, Concourse Village. She knows them by heart. Highbridge, Morris Heights, Mount Eden, Morrisania. <laughs> council member Vanessa Gibson, nice to have Thank you back you, with Gary. us. Um, uh, Dr. Goodman, let's uh, start with you. you. Give us the story. You told me off camera and prior exactly what had happened. Mm -hmm. So they cut this deal, and then what happened? How, how did this iconic street get left out of a, a deal between uh, Major League Baseball and Nike? Well, it's an iconic street. Like much of the Bronx gets left out of a lot of stuff. But uh, what happened... Oh, I like his attitude already. <laughs> <laughs> what happened here was that uh, an email was sent to the merchants advising them that they, starting in January, they no longer were going to have Yankee jerseys, named T-shirts, and the kind of stuff that is the core of their economy. And uh, I guess it was at the street fair mm -hmm. that uh, Councilwoman and I uh, discussed it and, mm -hmm. and walked over and, and spoke with one of the key owners and said, hey, we want to do something to help you with this. Uh, so we started the process of reaching out to Nike. It took a few weeks mm -hmm. calling out to the West Coast to identify someone out there who in turn passed the ball over to the New York <laughs> rep in uh, for Nike. Second base, <laughs> is that the proper metaphor? That's very know. good. And uh, it was Labor Day that she came yeah. out to the I didn't the realize district. it was that far back. Oh, wow. yeah, we've been yeah. working on this for a while. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fascinating. So Labor Day, she came up to visit, and um, she met with the store owners. She saw how these owners had invested in improving their storefronts and making it a really, as you put it, a Yankee experience to go in there. And nonetheless, when she reported back to the West Coast, the answer came that, um, no, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to provide them with this merchandise, meaning they're going under. I, I, I you know, I got to mm -hmm. tell you, I don't, even from a business perspective, I mean, I don't want to look at necessarily bottom lines, how much business they do, but... The New York Yankees selling Yankee, it's, it's the most, you came in wearing a Yankee logo, it's the most <laughs> famous logo in sports, it's the, maybe the most historic logo, right. and you have businesses that are, mm. man, do you ever try to get in one of those stores before or after a game? Right, they're packed, yeah. And, and so they turned it down. Mm -hmm. So they were talking, and, and I think... And then do we know why? They said that um, they were only going to operate out of premium distribution points, and what this meant for them was you could buy these jerseys and uh, T-shirts and sweatshirts inside the ballpark, or you could buy them directly through Nike. In fact, Nike even cut Amazon out 
-hmm. next well, year, I mean, right? You're that only gonna... competition is like Yankees Red Sox. <laughs> I, get, I, I get that. But, but, but anyway, the only way you could buy anything then is going to be direct to the consumer. So they're moving in a direction where everything, or pretty close to it, would either be online or through yeah. the chain stores. Right. Let, let me bring the council member in, and, but mm -hmm. it, it, there really are so many implications, and not, frankly, not only for the Bronx, which of course is what we're talking about, I mean, I'm thinking, do you go outside Fenway Park or Wrigley mm -hmm. Field or Camden right. Yards? I think Absolutely. it's everybody's selling this stuff. Um, what was your reaction? I, mean, I assume you were like, wait a minute, this just can't be, right? So at that street fair that Dr. Goodman is talking about, it was the late summer before Labor Day, and at first, I didn't realize the magnitude of what he was saying when the businesses received the first it email. It seems inconceivable. It almost seemed, <laughs> you know, unbelievable. And I said, are you sure? Like, why would that happen? And then as we started to research what was going on between Nike and Major League Baseball and this new merchandise agreement, we started to realize that we have these two corporate entities that are making decisions at a corporate level, but not really understanding what's happening at a Bronx level as it relates to our local merchants. And we understood the history of our Bronx businesses, the value, the fabric, the foundation. Over 100 Bronx residents employed to date, generational businesses from as early back as the 19. 30s. 30s right? And so we wanted Nike and MLB to understand that Bronx local businesses are important to us. And so that started a series of emails and communication. We used social media and we started to really draw attention to this merchandise agreement and the negative impact it would have on a local basis. And, and as I understand it, and Dr. Goodman frankly kept me blow by blow as the, you know this was unfolding toward the end, um, eventually, the Yankees uh, came to <laughs> came to Absolutely. bat. Absolutely, <laughs> uh, came up to bat, and they entered into it. You know, they have really tried their best. I know, especially through the process of building the stadium, mm -hmm. to to work with the Bronx and work with with Cary and the Bronx leaders. Um, they eventually came in and said, you know what, we really going to support our Bronx people, right? right. Credit, credit the we, council members. We alerted okay. Brian Smith, the right. vice president at the Yankee organization, to what was happening. And, you know, at first, obviously, a lot of the public would normally blame the New York Yankees for this. And we said, no, the Yankees really have nothing to do with this. This is Major League Baseball. Right. So the Yankees understood what the businesses provided, and they were equally as upset as we were. And they started to intervene and reach out to the Nike organization and MLB as well, and so they were a part of this process that, too. That probably, I, and nothing against any work that you folks did, but that probably was a very big thing because Absolutely. it's like if they're, if, so. if, you know, a member of their yes. organization, obviously yes. a very important yes. member <laughs> of um, their organization. So, um, Dr. Goodman, um, ultimately, you, uh, you know, good one out over evil. I don't want to be <laughs> like that, but that is how I feel about it. But, and, and you convinced them? I mean, what convinced them? Or, you know, is it just simply you can't do this? Uh, uh, I think the council members alluded to it. They finally came to understand that going to Yankee Stadium is not simply walking out of the subway or out of your car and going into the ballpark, that the whole area around Yankee mm -hmm. Stadium is sort of like the mecca of baseball globally. We get tourist buses daily. And they saw the impact that this was going to have on the image of baseball. And so, and, and you're a baseball off. fan, obviously a Yankee, <laughs> Yankee fan. Yankee fan. But but really, <laughs> let's talk about um, uh, you know he, uh, we're getting a look at some of the um, uh, merchandise. I mean, this is the experience. I mean, I know even mm -hmm. when my my children were young, we, you know, I couldn't go anywhere near Yankee Stadium without stopping by, even <laughs> when in the middle of winter because they wanted to buy like a plastic helmet or something. Um, but what happens then really outside Fenway Park, Wrigley Field, Camden Yards, uh, in Cincinnati they have all kinds of active um, right. uh, shops. Uh, I, I realize it's not your responsibility. The implications to me just are so Well, large. we kept the National Sporting Goods Association apprised of what we were doing as oh. we moved forward. Uh, at one point we thought we might have to start a national campaign to stop Nike from this process. Um, so they know what we've done, they know the success we've had. Um, and so it'd be up to the people around Fenway and around yeah, Camden Yards. Well, maybe they're not as active. Maybe they don't have as good a council <laughs> member as we do. Um, and, and, and another thing, and either of you can weigh in, so like Frank's Sports Shop on Tremont Avenue, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and there's a really, mm -hmm. I, which I used to go in all the time, there's a cap store on Fordham Road that's right. across yep. from Models. Yep. And I was actually on 125th Street recently, and I walked into this incredibly wonderful cap. There were caps everywhere. And I'm not talking about lids, which probably can become a, you know, right. what, what premium distributor. A premium <laughs> distributor, so to speak. A any thought about that? I mean, are they all really in danger? I mean, they are. 
Wow. Yeah, I would say so, definitely. I mean, future-wise, what we believe that Nike and MLB are looking to do is obviously focus more on online retail as well as some of their flagship stores. But we tried to get them to understand the local human aspect, the human connection that these businesses provide for not just Yankee fans, but for Bronx residents all year round. They're open outside of the Yankee season, whether we have NYCFC. I just described that. They're they open all kids, year. We all always year. used to go down Absolutely. There. And then I, I am one who likes to shop local and likes to shop you know, in a store because I want to make sure things fit. They're authentic. They're real. You can't see that from an online, you know, process. Uh, absolutely. So. <laughs> um, you put out an interesting release, and, and I, I don't know if this was just kind of press jargon, but you called Nike a new teammate. Oh, uh, yes, you said I did. These are the new <laughs> teammates. Um, so are there other implications? I mean, do you see uh, it would be nice if there was a further dialogue, so if something else comes up, or hey, why not open a Nike store and employ all these Bronx people? Then, then you've got your premier outlet. I mean, can, can this lead to something even better than the difficult things we've Absolutely. been Absolutely, and I think that's why we kind of use that, you know, that term and all credit to my chief of staff, Wendy Gallegos, for hmm. really being, you know, the voice for a lot of this in terms of communication. But what we want to do is welcome the Nike organization here into the Bronx, but also in terms of future decisions. I mean, we don't know what future merchandise agreements as it relates to footwear and athletic wear and other types of things that wow. will happen. So we want to assure them that they have a worthy investment in our Bronx businesses on River Avenue. And hopefully we can establish a greater partnership when, in fact, if they do make these types of decisions, they keep our Bronx businesses in mind as it relates to ongoing partnerships. We want them to see the mutual benefit of their investments at a national level and how that relates to us at a local level. I'm, I'm smiling because the one thing which you neither of you mentioned outwardly the one thing they saw was a Bronx tude, a little Bronx attitude. That, and, <laughs> and what, oh, and I mean that, I, maybe I said it in a funny way, but the borough president always says if you want to do business in the Bronx, the you got to do business with the Bronx. Yes. And um, so I, I, he, here's what the way I hear this is that because of the way we, I, I'll say we, because we're all in the Bronx standing up, because of the way we stood up, because of the way you stood up, when they come back and say, well, you know what? there is a place we want to open or there is another deal, they, I'm guessing they're not going to take advantage or I try agree. to do this kind right. of thing. I, like I love this. this. This is so Bronx. I love <laughs> it. No, really, this, this is who we are. We, I'm talking with people who understand my language. From, right? the, bon from the Bronx for the Bronx. Uh, I wanted to say, Gary, that Nike has been up there, but only uh, sporadically in the past. When Derek Jeter retired, Mm -hmm. The year he came back, Nike rented out one of our stores and used it as a place to introduce the one Jeter One of the stores on, on, uh, on River uh, Avenue. Okay. Yeah. And but they, then they worked with whoever owned the store or mm -hmm. the property yeah, owner. Exactly. And they so, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, exactly. Sure, why not? Yeah. Right. So, and that was, uh, I think, uh, a little taste of what it could be for them. And so I think maybe they weren't as uh, dug in as we might have thought I, from I, the outside. You know? I, I, they knew you know, who we were. We've had conversations with them. They put up a big mural once on top of stands. Too, right. for, to to uh, mark the mm -hmm. Jeter retirement. So they yeah. had a little taste. Now they want to come know, back you, for more. That's that, right. That's such an interesting concept because mm -hmm. then we always want to bring corporate money into the Bronx and mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. our businesses. I, I really like the idea. I'm, I'm curious, Council Member, um, you are working obviously with the Jerome Avenue rezoning and all that kind of stuff. And I, I'm guessing that there is this balance because there are, I'm sure, corporate interests versus local interests. Is there a lesson? I, I said at the outset there would be a lesson. Is there a lesson or something to take from this and say, well, this can be applied how? Right, so everything that happens, I always look at as a lesson learned, how you can avoid that from being repetitive, but also some of the best practices that we can develop moving forward. And I guess for me, working with Dr. Goodman and the bid is obviously looking at making sure that our bid is protected in all of our businesses, but how we can use some of these national organizations to partner with at a local level. And Nike had already been working with us in the Bronx in some way, as, as but now we can expand yeah. that, as well as with MLB mm. and with the Yankees. And you know, SBS, the Department of Small Business Services, and yes. our Commissioner Greg Bishop. Greg Bishop came to 
us on River Avenue and met with Dr. Goodman mm -hmm. and the businesses, so was very involved, and also working with small businesses in general. Some of the uh, programs for uh, licensing and other services and small business development, Workforce One, the mobile unit outreach. I actually have an event tomorrow with Commissioner Bishop um, at... Um, a bank on 167th Street in Gerard Spring Bank at mm -hmm. 10 o'clock and we are offering services for small businesses to understand how to navigate through mm -hmm. the city process. Um, so let's mm -hmm. ask you, Dr. Goodman, you're involved every day with small businesses I right. mean, the, and this I'm guessing is, and I think we've had this conversation somewhat in the past, this is a tough time for many of those businesses. They don't, yeah, <laughs> they don't have a, a billion mm -hmm. uh, people coming into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how are they doing? And, and in general, uh, feeling oppressed, uh, feeling like, well, we're we're getting somewhere. I mean, talk to no, me a little I, bit I about the No, I think people there have a really good spirit, especially after this agreement. And now there's the possibility... And I'm not talking only of River Avenue. I'm talking mm -hmm. all the way Yeah, no, I get it. Well, we have, uh, in our bid, we have one of the lowest vacancy rates of any of the 75 bids around the city. The Bronx is coming back, and a lot of it is coming back in small business form, up and down 161st Street and across River. We see a whole lot of interest in the properties there. In fact, Councilwoman and I worked together to make sure the city didn't mistakenly put a big jail right in the yeah. middle of that this, business This is district. a much larger dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could go there, but I don't think we're doing that today. But I mean, that's, that's the kind of atmosphere that we have there. It's a very collaborative, cooperative business community. And I guess the question needs to go to you, too, the same question that I asked to the council member, is um, the balance. In mm -hmm. other words, you, you know, you, you've got so many... Um, yeah, we've got franchise Folk stores, stores there that have been there. Family uh, stores. Deli down the block from the courthouse. I right. mean, how many street. times have I been in there? <laughs> you know, sure. uh, I mean, there's all that kind of stuff. Is it a balance and is it a tough balance when corporate interests say we want to come in like you did here with say, well, wait a minute, do it the Bronx way. I right. Mean, how do you deal with that? Well, I think so far we've been pretty successful at striking that balance. We've got some Dunkin' Donuts and Taco Bell stores that have recently opened. Mm -hmm. uh, they provide a service for the community. They employ people from the community. Yes, of course. So that seems to be working out. Now, we're going to have a bigger challenge coming in with the whole question of the, the redevelopment of the River Avenue corridor in, in regard to the soccer stadium. So uh -huh. we're going we're gonna to find out how well we can balance in that particular. Boy, you must be reading uh, off my uh, <laughs> list because the next thing I was going to ask is the, the idea of oh. the soccer stadium. <laughs> okay. So oh. now you, I thought it was fascinating. It's the first time I've heard of a bid doing it to this level. You did a, a survey about, uh -huh. about mm -hmm. whether or not Bronx Heights won a soccer stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, why and what did you learn? Okay, well, um, we wanted to do it because typically what happens no offense to the council member, mm -hmm. with city government She's and planning, Don't worry about her. <laughs> is that someone, a developer, spends a lot of money to you know, create an image or an idea or a plan for something like a soccer stadium. and They'll develop a model, and then they'll walk it through the approval process, and it's sort of too late for the community to really get its teeth into what they would like to see. So Boy, is that ever true? Okay. Go ahead. Yep. Keep going. So in this case, we decided to do a survey the people who live in the area where the stadium would be built, who work in that area, because remember, even though it's a Yankee Stadium zone, it's also the central, you mm -hmm. know, municipal downtown for the Bronx. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, so, people at the hub might disagree. On the <laughs> other hand, it is one of the central hubs of it the is. borough of the Bronx. Uh, fair no enough. question about it. Um, and then we interviewed, of course, uh, the small businesses, the legacy businesses. And, and what there. did they tell you? Well, I was shocked, actually. Two out of three people would like to see a soccer stadium on River Avenue. And we were in involved, the last time I was with you here, we were involved uh, in discussing this with the community five or six years ago, and it was a thumbs down all the way. So this survey sort of opened how my many, eyes. How many people were, were reached? 208 mm -hmm. and then 20 small businesses. Right. So it was a representative sample. And so listen, uh, you know, you <laughs> if I had a highlighter, I would highlight, you said they want one here. I mean, the here is, of course, where the question. Now, the, there was talk about the GAL site across the street from that the, is the Yankee here. Bar. That, mm -hmm. And that is still on the table. That so. is the here, yeah. yeah. What we hear <laughs> is, is that. And then would that necessitate taking down that parking lot across the street? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it would have to Yeah, be. absolutely. Um, uh, concern about that for a Yankee business or the Yankee business owners uh, feel that there was a mistake no. made with that garage. The Yankees had wanted it as part of the or right. original deal, but
but they didn't realize that if you build a beautiful Metro North station just right gonna, next to it, yeah. one's going to cancel yeah. out the other, and it did. And right. I think bondholders yeah, and the utilized. city, and everybody's been going under Those parking that. lots are not fully utilized today. There are at least There's 10, no question. Well, listen, spaces. for $40 to park your car, you, <laughs> you really ought to take a train. <laughs> I mm -hmm. Certainly for me in the borough of the Bronx, I'm getting on the D train. You can train spend more time in Stans and Billy's if you're yeah. going to take the train back. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 20, 20 minutes uh, from the house. And then what become the implications for the neighborhood? I, I mean, are you in favor of this? I mean, this becomes a very... Uh, you know, it's a challenging thing. Of course, you're going to have the new housing complex mm -hmm. not too far away. Mm -hmm. Of course, the hip-hop museum mm -hmm. is going to be mm -hmm. there. I mean, yes. I'm, I'm stealing so your remember, thunder here. So remember, this is all in Community Board 4. So the district manager and the board chair recently, a few weeks ago, uh, put together uh, almost like an assessment where they asked elected officials, stakeholders, small businesses, CBOs to come together, and we did a series of interviews of what we wanted to see. Remember, this is the civic area of all the municipal services for the Bronx. It's also the home of Yankee Stadium. You have the lower concourse housing project, the expansion of Mill Pond Park, the build out of the Bronx Children's Museum, the home of the Universal Hip Hop Museum, all in pretty much the same area. And so the idea of a soccer stadium, I think, is a good one because it will bring a lot of value, but I also know it needs to be done correctly. So a lot of us have been around long enough to remember the reconstruction of the new Yankee Stadium and how we lost a lot of parkland and there was a lot of demand. There was a community benefits agreement. And so things didn't go as we wanted them to. So this is a lesson learned where we can do something better. So I appreciate that we're starting these conversations early on because if we're talking about demolishing a parking lot, there's the uh, Major Deegan ramp that's also in play. There's a lot of things that need to happen in order mm -hmm. for this to go through. Well, as a, um, a Bronx person, <laughs> A Boy, lot. that Major Deegan needs needs more work than <laughs> just a ramp. Yeah, and it's certainly if you're going to um, do something there, right. you know, it's it's very interesting and and frankly comforting to hear what you say because people who have been through this just like you have and, and I guess we, we all have, then they say, well, wait a minute, they're just yeah. going to do a giveaway and you want to do it right. And and I will say, not that I've traveled all over the country, but if you were to go to Philadelphia or you were to go to um, uh, other cities they have all their stuff in one particular place. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're oh, the twin the, stadiums, like if you go to yeah. Cleveland, they've got the you football You go to Pittsburgh, the baseball, baseball and football yeah. are right yeah. there. So it does make sense. It's a little more complicated because we're so yes. dense yes. in, in mm -hmm. uh, the borough. And still so residential as well. We don't forget about the residents. And so timing or, and, and now the Yankees have some role in this? Sure, the Yankees mm -hmm. own 12% of the team. The team, right. China owns 13% <laughs> of the team. And the fella who owns the biggest chunk of it, over 70% of it, is the third richest person in the world. So, Gary, I'd just like to go back to the enthusiasm of the stadium because yes. uh, it wasn't just saying, give us a soccer stadium. People in the community, like the council member and the bid, have thought about it, and they know what they want to see in a soccer stadium. For example, the team that would be going into that stadium, which currently plays at Yankee Stadium, is an all-male team. Well, well, that can't stand. Well, sorry, excuse <laughs> me. I mean, there's no question about it. You need a, a you female professional. You just got to open your eyes you and see the girls who are playing soccer in the Bronx. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So there is a National Women's Soccer League. They don't have a New York see, team. This, this is what yeah, the council yeah, member yeah. says about doing it right. Yep. Let, let yeah, it exactly let's right. Do it the Bronx way. Here's another yeah. point that. I, and I want to add one thing. My sure. own interjection about it is I want to see a Bronx. High school championship. I'm getting teary eyed <laughs> on that field. Right, oh and that. Can you imagine? And guess how what? Exciting. Nine, oh nine goodness. out of ten people in the survey said that the stadium owners should be required to provide access Absolutely. to yes. local high school I'm concerts. frustrated, we have to. frankly, I'm frustrated about Heritage Field. That may be, you know, is that so yeah. I go there and I don't see enough kids on that field. Yeah, and, yeah, and it's not kept up in the way they should be. But yeah. you brought up... That's, right. That's yeah. another story. <laughs> but you brought up a very good point about this community benefits agreement. Mm. I think that's an outdated uh, concept when the people who wanted to put Amazon out in Queens came in sort of... Well, you also have the uh, Kingsbridge Armory over <laughs> and here. And the Kingsbridge Armory yeah. way... So what, what is your attitude okay. toward that? Well, I think what the council member mentioned is that we need to be partners in this stadium. In fact, six out of every... Whether it's a CBA or not? Or no or CBA. It, they need to make it a corporation oh. and an ownership, oh. ownership slice. Partner. Yeah, the, as you know, the Green Bay Packers are completely owned by the community. Fascinating. But here, what we're looking to do, at least the bid is promoting, and we're hoping to have you know wider support for it, is uh, if you live in that neighborhood, 
if you work in that neighborhood, if you provide services like as a church or a social service organization right. or a small business owner, you'll have the opportunity to buy at a uh, insider's rate stock for that wow. stadium. So when they put it up, when they move forward and wow. they sell the naming rights, those rights, that money's coming back to the neighborhood. You know, this is the, the other thing that bothered me about the Yankee store thing is that we look for opportunities for people who will spend money here. Right. You know, from outside. Listen, of if I go bring my kids and, you know, we're cycling Bronx money all around. But people who come to Yankee Stadium and spend money in those stores, I mean, that's that's what we want to do. Other 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 people's money, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I all year ask, round, too. Uh, before we run out <laughs> of time, I want to ask point. you about something else in, mm -hmm. in your neighborhood, and that was it, which really relates to this is the whole idea of the Joker Steps. Oh yeah. The Joker <laughs> Step Street. So here it is, this iconic place, mm -hmm. or it became an iconic place yeah. without us even trying, and. Um, there's a lot of resentment of people saying, well, tourists are coming. Are we really, they're just in the way. What, what is your attitude towards what has happened over there on 167th Street? So all respect to the residents in our community on Anderson, Shakespeare, and Woody Crest that have used the 167th Street step streets for years. Um, outside of northern Manhattan and the Bronx, no one knows what step streets are because they only <laughs> exist in a concentrated area. Right. Out of 100 step streets in New York City, I'd say at least 60 are in Bronx. And I they think are, are 62, heavily actually. utilized by Bronx residents to get around, to travel, um, as a form of exercise as well, right? And so when I first heard the story and I knew the Joker movie included that, at first I was excited that a part of the Bronx was being used for that fashion. But then when it was used, it seemed like it was such a negative connotation. And I said, well, we're highlighting a part of the Bronx where people live, and that's where they raise their families, but then you have this negative spin on it. Right. So I wasn't happy about that. Now, since I've been in the council, I have renovated and been a part of the reconstruction of two step streets. It was so the it's one any that was painted uh, right up the block yep. from there. I yep. forget what street it's So it's on. anywhere from about <laughs> $6 million to $8 million for a full renovation. So when it first got all this media attention, I reached out to the Department of Design and Construction, and I said to the President, Lorraine Grillo, uh, the 167th Street steps need some attention. Everyone's talking about them, but they're in bad condition to me. So can we look at possibly renovating ah. them or sprucing them up? So if they want to get attention, we're, let's we're, make them look beautiful. We're just about out of time. Where's the dialogue at? It's gonna, it'll happen so at some point. So we're we're talking Great. back and forth. So I hope in the next budget we'll be able to do something. I do a, a edition of this program every week, all year long. This was one of my most fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Because they came in with a Bronx attitude. We're standing up for Bronx people and Bronx businesses, yes. and that's what we do. Thank you, Councilmember Thank Vanessa you. Gibson, Thank you. Dr. Carrie Gary, Goodman. Thank you. Uh, 161st Street bid. Get to 161st Street. There's some great yes. places to hang out. Absolutely. Spend a couple of dollars. Yes. Bring your friends from the suburbs yes. to spend money. That's what we want. Good food. <laughs> See you guys around. And folks, <laughs> if you have further questions or comments on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, email them to us at bronxtalk at bronxnet.org. You can send us a tweet at Bronx Talk or you post them on our Facebook page. Our producer is Helen Greenberg. Our director is Nick Marrero. Thank them. Thank you. Thank the cast of thousands who are out here. We'll see you next week. Good night. Thank you.